Whether you're a guy in a cape. I forgot the words to the song. Or a rogue who's sneaky. It's been so long. Join Roger and Chris as we entertain the geeky. Yeah. I did. I totally. It's been a while. Like, we need to get our new jingle up. Yeah. I, yeah, we should work on that. I actually wrote one. Did you? Yeah. How'd that go? Fine. Yeah? So, we're here. We're an, here. An extra episode. One extra episode since we slacked a little bit this past week. You know, so we keep bringing that up. I, I think it was a well-deserved, well-earned no, we week it. off. I, it reset the batteries, refocus. Like, we got we did a lot of work behind the scenes. No, there was still work being done. It just yeah. wasn't. Yeah, we just didn't entertain you guys. And we, we apologize. And next time we'll let you know. We were doing other things to entertain you. Yeah, just, you know, it was more like tribute pictures. Yeah. Yeah, like I would tribute to Entertain the Geeky. Yeah. yeah. You know, jerk off on pictures of, of you. Thank God. Yeah. That's... Somebody has to. I know, right? Um. So. Yeah, Chris, what's up? I want to get into the nitty gritty about, because we're, we. We did a bunch of playtesting for EG Games tonight. Yes. I mean, I don't know if it's a bunch. We, we playtested a game. But it was a really good game. It was a really good game. And lately, like, we've been focusing on playtesting once every couple of weeks here. Yeah. We've got our game, up, you know, a few of the games at a point to where they're getting ready to be put out. Um, for you, what's your favorite style board game? Ooh. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's a style per se. I, I like board games that are easy to pick up and play. Agreed. Um, as much as I as much as I enjoy the complicated games mm-hmm. that, that that take time that you have to like invest with, I find those games are harder to, to actually play with people. Oh yeah, because it's hard to get a group together to play. Definitely. So for me, the the ease of pick up and play, uh, like Settlers or uh, Risk, you know, you know, they can they can begin to take a while. But the pick up and play, the ease of that is what matters to me more than anything. It's the same thing for me. I think one of the more, one, one of the best games for that, you know, like we talk, we we suck settlers cock quite a bit um, as gamers. Yeah. Uh, like we, it's one of the, it's probably one of the most perfect games out there. But I mean, that's why it's withstood the test of time the way it has. Um, but there's another one out there that that uh, is very easy to pick up and play, and that's ninjas versus ninjas. I've not played that. That's one. where you're trying, like, like you start on one side of the map and your ninja start on the other side of the map, and you gotta, you gotta fight each other, and it's very quick, very fun little game to play. Or if not, nin- pirates versus ninja. Pirates versus ninja. pirates. I'm so so stupid. Pirates versus ninja, and they did they did a three one uh, pirates ninjas and something else for a three player game. And boogeyman. I don't know what it was. Um, what about you? Like 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 what what type of like board games do you enjoy? So. I actually the the ease of play thing is is my biggest thing. Um, not all of my friends are gamers, right? So to get other people engaged in games, like I I like to bring new people into that part of the hobby. I do too. Um, um, but I do I do like like Descent. Descent's a complicated game. It is. To play, it's a cool fucking game. But it's a damn good game. And I'm I'm not saying that I'm opposed to those. I like getting new people into it, though. Yeah. And you're not really going to do that with a descent right out of the gate. No. That's how you scare people off yep. from it. They're like, no, I don't want to fuck with games. Did I ever tell you the story about how I actually went out and bought Descent? Uh-uh. So, for, for, for uh, one of the used gaming auctions, I got a copy of Heroescape. Oh, man. Um, we sat down and played, me and my buddy Brian and my ex-wife sat down and played, like, five minutes of Heroescape. And I was like, this game is amazing! And my buddy was like, yeah, Descent's like this game on crack. So instantly I went, all right, grabbed the cash, went up and bought Descent, like right then and there. Nice. And, and played it. And that game was just so good. Yeah, Descent's a cool game. You know, I, I have a, a game that I haven't played yet, Shadows Over Brimstone, which oh, is man. Descent, but set in the West. Yeah, we actually, we should do that on, do a YouTube episode you on gotta that. Pay, you gotta, I, I still gotta paint everything, put everything together. I'm kind of lazy for that. But I'll do it. All you gotta do is put it together. I don't have to pay with play with anything painted. But but I'm kind of a perfectionist. Fuck that, man. Alright, let's, All right, let's just do it. Let's shit. do it. You got the game to play. That's I, been I sitting for two years. It, it, it has. I've opened it once. I know. And looked at it and I was like, this is really pretty. Here's the mood music CD. Yeah, I came with the CD. Yeah, that was really cool. And that's badass. Yeah. Um I so the the games that I tend to fall more in love with are card based games. Yeah. Uh and it's it, those are generally a little more player friendly, and not always. I, you know why? I, also, they're smaller. Like oh, they, yeah. they take up less room. They're they're less intimidating. 
Very much so. Like, you can play Splendor, which, if once you set Splendor out, you're like, oh, shit, what did I get yeah. into? But it's a quick game to pick up and play. Yeah. Um, so, But, yeah, I, I, I like uh, I, I, anything I can get new people into playing games with. Yeah. Because it, it's a rabbit hole from there. It is, because from, from, from the simple games to... Oh, King of Tokyo. That's a good simple King game. King of Tokyo is a great simple game. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I I toot their horn every time we talk about games. Red Dragon Inn. Red Dragon Inn. Super simple game. Yeah. Um, I mean, as much as... I'm not crazy about Flux. Uh, oh, but I love Flux. Flux is super simple. The, um, the only reason you hate Flux is it takes no strategy to win. Yeah. Like, you just win the game. Yeah, exactly. You kind of trip on it. It's not That's not for me. Yeah, yeah. No, There's you, not a real win con. No. Not really. There's real no strategy. Like, yeah. you can play with a cat, and the cat could win. Every time. Yeah, it just happens. Um, you win if you're a cat. All right, so so let, let's, let, 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 so board games, what card games Yeah. Would, would, would you would you recommend for, like, someone just trying to get in, in the ground floor? Um, I, I know one right off the bat. I mean, Star Realms is a given. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, deck builders are fun. Um, if if I know this person has played uh, something like Magic the Gathering or anything like that, I always recommend a deck builder out of the gate. Um, if you're if somebody's already played like a deck builder like Star Realms or DC deck building or Ascension and they're or like, Epic or Epic, I well Epic's not the same. No, it's, it's, it's still a deck. It's a no, drafting deck. It's builder. a drafting. It's yeah. a cool game. Um, but it, you NHL. know, s- somebody that's done something like that, I would then tell them to do legendary oh yeah because legendary just adds a couple new mechanics to it gets a little more complicated but it's a very good game and it's using these similar things and then from legendary i would push them into a full-blown board game well from legendary the thing about legendary is now that they've got it they've got it for anything you want yeah you got marvel you've got aliens you got predator you got big trouble in little china like it's all there i love big trouble in little china Uh, serenity yeah oh my why don't i own any of the legendary games I, I own the uh, Marvel one. Do you? The base set, yeah. We need to rock it out and play it one day. I'm down. Um, you know what board game I really enjoy that, that I think that, that's kind of complicated? Um, Zombie Side. Zombie Side is a beefy game. Like it, it It's a no shit game. That, that's a, one of those games that's fucking intimidating. So I think what you, like, like I think the best way. Especially like, with expansions. Oh my god, so many expansions. Have you seen the table when Paul Fay plays that shit? Yes, I've played with Paul Fay. It takes up this man will put like three yep. folding tables up against each yep. other, fill all fucking three of them, and, and, and still lose within an hour. Like, like yeah, that's what I, I killed the group. I'm the reason we died when we played Zombie Side. I opened the wrong door. It was my fault. But no zombie. So I, I think how to get people to play Zombie Side, which we could say is the I'm gonna say it, it's the best of that style game. It's good. So, sure. so I would start with Ghostbusters, okay, which is Zombie Side Light. Because that's what it is. And it's, it, it's okay. half the it's half the cost. So Zombie Side Light. Start with Ghostbusters. Play through that, and then move to Zombie Side. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. This is breaking them in. Break it in. Um, you got you got to pop the cherry somewhere. So, we the game that we tested tonight was a strategy game, resource management strategy. Yeah. Uh, I want to be honest with you. That was the first type of game like that i've played and i loved it yeah it was really good so, i mean i know we're kind of so to giving kind of, auto fellatioing ourselves I mean, let, here. no no no. let's uh, let's give a breakdown of the game so basically um each person starts with a vehicle right you're in a desert in a post-apocalyptic world maybe uh that's what it is so far um it could change and you take your vehicle go to different places to set up bases yeah bases give you different resources and it's you have your resource management aspect there, and then you have a uh, fighting aspect to it where you're, you're duking it out with, with other, other players camps. Yeah. for resources. I, I think, like like I said, after we played the game, it reminded me a lot of Command and Conquer. Yeah, and that's what I felt like we were playing. Um, I, I that type of game was a lot of fun, and it was so simple. Yeah, very simple, very fun game. I can't wait to delve more into this and play test. Oh some man, more. the, the uh, so you're building settlements. Yeah, building settlements. Um, you get your settlement. To a point to where you're established. The, the people who get established first, which is there are a few milestones that you have to hit as a society. Um, once you hit that, you win the game. Yeah. And it is, it was fun. It was. Uh, Chris didn't read right. I did not read right because I was like, I win. And then they were like, no, you missed part of your win con. And I was like, shit. And then Jeff won. And then Jeff won. Um, and he was like, nope, I, I win. win. Little bastard. 
That was it was a good game though. And then we want to do some. Uh... Your snake's freaking out over there, man. That's fine. She's having a good time. Well, she, what is she doing? She's trying to get out. I don't like it. And then we're gonna do some uh, some new role playing supplement stuff that we're excited about. Are we? Are we officially gonna do this? Well, yeah, we already talked about right, it. Fuck it. So here's what EG Games is doing, uh, and expect the first one to come out in four weeks, one month from now. We are doing D and D Fifth Edition Adventures, and not like like w- Wizards when they release their adventures, they're like campaigns. We're breaking out old school. Like you just pick this up and you fucking go. Play it for the night. Play it for the night. Like we'll and each different adventure will be for different level parties. Go from there. It's all about the one shots. Well, and you know, I I like that because. You you had actually mentioned at one point and it kind of ruined a lot of D and D for me. You're like, not every time that you play D and D has to be a world shattering event. Right. You're like, you can go in the cave and just slay some monsters. Slay, slay a monster, get the treasure. That's go home. that's that's what and, you can uh, do. I I have been looking forward to playing a game like that. After you mentioned that, I'm like, you know what, man, I am sick of that because every every time I do one, it's 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 earth changing. Right. Whatever is happening is going to well, change the well, fate of the universe. I think a lot of DMs. Like, they, they drop the ball on this. Like, they, they go straight to the meta plot. And um, what what needs to happen is, one, get the characters custom to the world. Which which is the, you go and you save the print. You go and you, you, you save the town from dire rats. Yeah. Are you, just go slay the monster and take the treasure. And, and as you build up the world, like, have the guys in the background doing stuff that the characters don't know about. And then drop the bomb. And then turn it into the epic world. Like, like, do that. Make make the players more invested in the world than just the scenario. I mean, what if it's even just saving your town? Yeah. Oh, to me, like, like in my mind, one of the one of the ultimate ideas I had for D anD D was an entire campaign just took place in this town, and and you never really went like you'd go outside of the town to do a few things here or there, but that's it. It was just about the town, and then as you level up, you realize that your town, and like people would just kind of disappear every once in a while. Then you go out and you couldn't find them. And you realize that that uh, what is known to you is the town and a few square miles out of the town. Um, other than that, you realize your whole that whole area is in a bag of holding. So you're stuck in a bag of holding. That's hilarious. And that was going to be the end of the campaign. Yeah. Can Can you get out of the bag of holding? We I never played it. I don't know. That'd I didn't be, get that far. That would be hysterical. Like you got out of it, like you just slid a slid a hole in the bag of holding and you're done. I I don't know, but that's how the game was going to be. Oh, that'd out. be crazy. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I but I, I do think that we, especially with D and D and and most fantasy role playing games is everyone wants to play Lord of the Rings. They wanna they wanna destroy the trinket and save the world, but what made Lord of the Rings work was the Hobbit. Before it, you know, you set up the world, you set up Bilbo going and finding the ring, and you return to this world, and you got the grand adventure. It's it's getting to that grand adventure that, that that makes the grand adventure worthwhile. Well, yeah. Here's the thing: like when you're, it's escapism. Okay, yeah. so I understand that you want to do something different, but your character is going to have a day to day life, and I can assure you, saving the world isn't part of their day to day life. No, shining armor, <coughs> shining armor, digging the the fucking shit holes. That's what you do. Like, how awesome would you play a D and D campaign where you're just fucking sh- soldiers? Oh, that's going really... through the monotony of, of being a soldier. Foot soldiers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's what you do. Like, you can be whatever character and class you want to be, but at the end of the day, you're a fucking foot soldier. You're a grunt. Yeah, that's it. That would actually be a lot of fun. You know? So, that, that I think that's that's what's that's what's missing in a lot of games. Not just D&D, just a lot of games in general. It's everyone, players sit down and they go, okay, what's the overall arc? Not not the episodic thing, which is... Not, how are we going to get through the day? Right. Like So that's why I, I'm, I haven't played yet, because... Uh, of, of being sick and, and missing the session, but that's why I'm excited about the Star Trek game I'm in. Yeah. Because it's an episodic thing, which, which is really cool to me. Week to week, there's no grand fucking plot hole, no... Just hanging just out. Just hanging playing. out, fucking exploring space. The way Star Trek was meant to be, and I'm really excited to get into this game. No, that sounds like a blast. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work on some, some D&D adventures. We're gonna throw them up on the website for, you know, purchase and print and play. Yeah, it, it, and it'll be... A, a day of monotony for no no yeah that's all it is is uh, adventure one is how do you so- shine your sword the best you know I made stew tonight yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's another thing um, that that gets glossed over is like 
how how realistic do you want your D and D games to be? Yeah. Well, I I'm asking you. I I like the whole fantasy thing. Um, so like, sword, shields, magic, all that. I'm cool with that. Uh, when aliens start coming from outer space, <laughs> that's when I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> that happened. That happened. It did. No, happen. but uh, like when I said realistic, I meant like the ammo counting and the food and all that. Like. You know, that, that's something that, that they gloss that, over. That a shouldn't lot. be glossed over, though. Right. That's kind of like, like should it be or shouldn't it be? It sh- it, that should definitely be a big part of the game. Okay, why? So, if you were, even if you're in some giant end of the world apocalyptic thing and you're trying to save the world, you still have to make sure that your character got food in his belly yeah. so he doesn't die. You have to make sure that your character is rested so he's not falling asleep and falling on a sword. Got to make sure you have enough arrows. You got to make sure you have enough arrows. Like, wh- how funny would it be? So you're you're tracking, the DM is tracking how many arrows an archer has. Okay. The archer is doing a shitty job at it. Okay. He reaches back into his quiver and, and feels no nothing. Yeah. Just that reaches happen. back and there's nothing. Unless you're Legolas. Yeah, no, he's got infinite. Yeah, that's, uh, how, that's how that works. But no, that, that like that would make for a fun thing in a campaign. Hey, you reach back to grab an arrow. There's nothing left. I need to write. I need to start taking notes because I'm gonna have all this shit happen to you. Do it in our game. Yeah, do it. No, I mean I'm 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 about that. Drag me, drag me through the mud. So so next week, guys. Um, I I want to I want to pimp this up. Uh, our episodes are gonna be a little bit longer. Yep. I mean, normally we only do twenty to twenty five minutes. Yeah. Each episode next week. Besides our news episode, is probably going to be thirty-five to forty minutes. I would say, yeah, if not a little bit longer, um, depending on how engaged we are. Yeah, we are we are going to get in the nitty gritty of the history of D anD. d We're gonna we're gonna do three separate episodes on, next week. Uh, the first episode is going to be about the history of D anD. d The actual how it was made, uh, how it came to be, how zero edition turned into fifth edition. You know, the, the journey of D anD. d uh, the second episode, which I feel is going to be the longest episode, which yeah. might actually break an hour, because it's going, it, we're not going to be able to shut up. About we'll see it, what happens. Is it's going to be the worlds of D anD D. We're going to talk about Planescape and Ravenloft and Forgotten Realms and and, and Greyhawk and all all that stuff is, is what we're going to talk about. We're going to discuss our favorites and why we like what and what monsters are and where and all that good stuff. And then the third episode is we're going to talk about the difference between the actual editions, what was good in some, what was bad in others, um, compare and contrast. Math Finder. Math Finder. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Pathfinder in that episode. It's going to come it up. It has to. Yeah. It has um, to. And we're going to talk about the split between third, fourth, fifth, Pathfinder, first edition, second edition. I'm really looking forward to this because it's something that... We're we, going to touch on the white box, too. Oh, God, yeah. Damn right we are. I might bring the white box over. That'd be fun. Um... So be, be 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 ready for that. I'm really excited for that. I think next week's episodes, yeah, yeah. I I think if you are wanting to get to know a little bit more about role playing, or if if you're a role player and this is something that you really haven't looked into at all, you're gonna be entertained and educated. Very like, much so. Like Channel Nine, PBS. For those who don't have, yeah, PBS. Yeah. Yes. Um, I will actually bust out my NPR voice for this one. Okay. Yes. It'll be very soft and monotone as we talk about D&D. And in 1978... Gary Gygax sat down and realized that single miniature combat was the way to go. (laughs) Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. No. We're gonna be stoked and screaming and... Yeah, yeah. uh, Jeff's gonna join us for this. It's gonna be a good time. Jeff is stoked too because he's he's really wanting to do these uh, D&D one-shots that we're working on. Um... I also think that like this is something that we're gonna do more of. Um, like, like take maybe maybe not once a month, but once every other month, we're gonna pick like something revolutionary in the nerd world. It doesn't necessarily have to be games. It could be video games. It could be movies. And we're gonna get a little more deep on on that just generalized. Topic. Or just yeah, because what like, about what about com- like we could even do it with comics. So oh, oh definitely. This is, this is this is when they stopped just being superhero comics. Right. Like like oh, we can do like hey and the, this this like we're gonna talk fucking Watchmen. Oh, yeah. and, and like what Watchmen meant and what it did and and, and all of that stuff. Um, Chris well, that's, and I—that's just Alan Moore being profound, right? Like, like here's the thing: Chris and I started the show as a way to talk about shit we cared about in the nerd world, and then and then talk to you guys and and, and all that good stuff. And, and we've kind of gotten away from it a little bit, and we we have. I mean, we still geek out with you, but it's not it's the not same. It's not the same. And it's not the same. We need to go back. Yeah, I, I want to go back. Chris wants to go back. 
we, we still will have fun. We're going to talk about deep frying fucking Twinkies. We're still going to do all that shit, but we're going to kind of refocus the show more into entertaining the geeky and focus on the geeky. And if that means we're going to sit there and talk about eat, the best way to eat people in the Walking Dead environment, that's what we're going to talk about. And damn it, we did it. We did it. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. That that is my promise. That is Chris's promise. That is what we're getting back to. That's you guys. the EG promise. That's yeah, we we, we 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 want to furnish what we had before, and like um, we we've grown a lot. We have in the in the last couple of months here, mm-hmm. even with uh, you know getting a little bit away from the initial vision um, that we had when we started doing this. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get back into the geeky and. Yeah. But, but if we lose listeners because of that, I'm okay, okay with it. Well, you know what? I'd rather I'd rather gain one geek and lose five perds. Yep. 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 Fucking perds. So the rage will happen. The entertainment will still be there. We're still going to be cracking jokes and having a good time. It's going to be just like when you visited us at the comic shop. Exactly. Back to the basics. So guys, uh, do me a favor. Go to entertainthegeeky.com. Follow us on the social media there. We've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that crap. Follow us. We're going to be posting more stuff here. We, we, we pick up steam with this. Uh, you can listen to all of our episodes on YouTube if you want. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave They're a all comment. there. It's all there. Um, all and there. we're going to be very soon uploading videos. I'm still trying to figure out editing. I've never done anything like that before, so it's it's been a process for me. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we, we love doing this. We love you guys. Make sure you come out March 25th to Game Haven to the Battle of, or the Age of Heroes 2. Five Age bucks. Get two. to play video, play fighting games all day with us. We're going to talk trash. And it's going to be a fucking I'm, smack I'm talk gonna fest. I'm going to beat the fuck out of all of you in Street Fighter. Mostly Cody Tubbs. That's what Mostly you're worried about. Mostly Cody Tubbs. Um, so, yeah. One more thing, guys. BeastEscapeRoom.com. Promo code Geeky. 20% off. 20% off of your escape room experience. And it's quite an experience. Make sure you say hi to Ronnie Cobb out there. Ronnie Cobb's the man. Um, yeah, we, we've had people using those promo codes too. And I'm excited uh, at least, about that. At least one that we know of. He took a group. Oh, he took a group. He took a group. Nice. Yeah. So we're stoked about that. Guys, thank you for tuning in. As always. I'll see you next week. Stay geeky.